this is probably the most uh, common case we use for pegging. Uh, this is um, a what we call a wing cap. Um, so you've got these big ridges here that put a lot of strength in. Yeah, I need to clean my fingernails. Uh, and you've got a hole here for the cotton pin, the big lock ring goes in here. Um, this is easily identified by the lower nut here than the early imperial case, which is thicker. Um, and we're gonna weld in there our pegging plates, which are those. So we have uh, three 10 mil CNC uh, cut and heavily shaped pieces that we're gonna weld in. Um, and we'll show you that all tacked up and welded in a minute. But that is probably the most common case that we use uh, for pegging. So we've got it all tacked up and as you can see we've um, we've ended up over the years getting the, the fitment really good. That's tacked into place in several cases because once we start welding this it's amazing how everything wants to move about. So those are the first two 10mm plates for the metric case. We've now welded that on. So that's the first of the two 10mm plates and now we've got the, the final one to go on uh, which is this one. Uh, which is shaped and we have to jig that to get it in the correct position and then finish that. You'll notice the back piece there and each of the corners we leave open and that's so when we do the belt and braces and we put our metal replacement resin in there it forces uh, any of the air out of the cavity below and means that when we drill through the two holes uh, for the dog bolts for the peg pad are completely independent from the rest of the casing. Even having done well over a thousand of these now, uh, you can get porosity, little pinhole, and boy, oil will find a pinhole. So let's finish it off. This is now finished. Uh, we've welded it across the back. You can see the bottom uh, plate welds there. Welded down the sides uh, and welded across the front. Now on these casings, this piece at the back here can vary Quite considerably we've had to trim about two mil off this to make it all fit up at the front so that is your standard metric casing that we have pegged two holes at the top give us the guidance holes which are in the jig so that means that all we got to do is drill through the holes and uh, tap it with the auto tapping head which we'll show you later uh, stamp it with a number paint it job done next up imperial casing Imperial casings predate the metric casings. Imperial can be spotted by having a particularly large headed bolt. Uh, metric case, M12. Uh, Imperial case, 7 16 BSF. Very close, but different. Uh, takes a bigger bearing on the side here um, and is a different shape in there, which is wonderful. So we've got a different set of plates. The other difference with these is somewhere here we have got a filler plug and there are different types of these um, but this allows you to actually put oil in the diff uh, with the diff in the vehicle and not have to go through the uh, filler plug on the axle pan however there are some axles that don't have filler plugs on the pan so you would have to have one of these unless you want to put your vehicle on its side and take the hub out to uh, fill up the diff so uh, these plates look very similar, but in actual fact are shaped slightly differently. Um, great fun because we have them laser etched so we know which ones are which. Uh, this one here particularly uh, can be uh, a real pig on these because this area down here varies uh, depending on the maker. And there are different makers for all of these types of diffs. It's not just one company casts them. So we have to spend a lot of time uh, fettling these to get them to be a nice fit so let's tack this one up so here that is all welded up now you'll notice there's some different colors on the welding and that's because we have to turn the amps up for these um, earlier casings I don't know what it is about the casting they just take more amps on the TIG machine um, also the base plate on this comes out further so you've got a step on this rather than a flat front up here um, and that's because some of them have great big thick flanges at the back. So we, we have one type of plate uh, for, for two different imperial casings. So now we'll move on to the more modern casing, which we call the flat cap. Now the flat cap casing is called the flat cap because it has a flat cap. Uh, it's held in with a very silly 
a little uh, roll pin which is hollow which is about oh I don't know three mil uh, which is absolutely no use at all we've seen lots of these break off we've done a video of it um, as you can see that's not really quite central and uh, the other one's a bit better but to hold a diff together that is just purely cost cutting uh, still has the M12 bolt there takes the standard RTC 3095 we do not like these in fact if you look at that that one's bent uh, if that bends, it lets the adjuster ring move. If the adjuster ring moves, your diff backlash changes. If it breaks, your diff will unwind and blow up. Um, and these also have a different pattern in here. You've got these big lumps here. Um, so we have yet another set of plates for this one. And we'll weld this one up in a minute. So here is a metric flat cap uh, welded up, pegged. Um, there's only one problem, we won't sell you this, and we won't sell you this peg casing because of this horrible Land Rover bodge here. There's no point, in our opinion, upgrading your diff to having a peg casing and having that there. So why are we bothered? I'll show you why. On these casings, we basically chop that off, we clean up the whole of the carrier cap area, and we shape it, and we shape it to take one of these uh, this is Domex 700 MC also called Styrex it's an incredibly tough metal and basically this is three times the structural strength of mild S276 so 3 mil Domex is like putting 9 mil plate on top of there we have got little cutouts here that allow us to TIG weld onto the sides and by the time we've shaped it um, we've also got two little uh, collars uh, that go on the top to mimic the uh, the locking type tab these are welded from underneath we leave on the CNC a half mil difference between the bottom of the little tab and the bottom of the Domex carrier uh, and we will we weld those up with the TIG and basically it's all flush um, that's four mil Domex so that's the same as having 12 mil each side here we don't even put a cotter pin through here we put a five mil 12.9 uh, grade bolt with a nut on the end um, so we're going to do that to this so that's where the little bit was on the side with the silly pin through and we have got our Domex carrier cap conversion welded on um, that there is welded from underneath and we'll take one of our uh, normal uh, XS4 before locking rings we have this made out of a ridiculously strong metal uh, called CS80, it's uh, it's made to be a perfect fit in there. It's actually ground to be a bang on fit. We actually tap that into place, and then we put a five mil nut and bolt through. Same on the other side. Um, this is a incredibly strong upgrade. Um, I'd probably say it's borderline stronger than the original um, metric locked cap type. Um, but there's one more that's even better than this. But this way we can use these. The only time we'll use the ordinary flat caps and the locking pin is what we call a sort of standard diff, a two pin maybe for someone or someone that really doesn't want to spend money on either a peg case like this one uh, or uh, we can actually put this upgrade onto a standard diff that isn't pegged which again is a very cheap, very strong upgrade. So let's go to the other flat cap case that we use. Now the other flat cap case is what we call our ultimate. Um, this still has these flat cap casings um, which we're going to cut off and we're going to Domex convert but it's also got a locking collar. I've taken the one out of there and these locking collars go into there and when these are fitted they means that the carrier caps can't shuffle and shuffling is basically where there's a difference between the bolt going through the eel into the thread below and it can allow the carrier cap to do that. When this locks into there it's solid and then we put our 12.9 grade um, conversion bolts with Nordlock washers and on here this will be domexed as well. So that in itself makes this a stronger diff but there's another little bit that we do to these as well. Here is a standard nose cone uh, this takes 539707 Timkin bearing. What we've done 
is we've bored this out on the CNC machine and this allows us to fit the very big, very much stronger series uh, split nose, big bearing case end on it. Uh, there is a video that shows this, but that again is a huge strength upgrade. So now you're going to have a flat cap casing with Domex carrier cap conversions with Nordlox and 12.9 grade socket caps um, and a collet a colleted carrier cap and an upgraded big bearing uh, pinion bearing and that is the strongest case that at the time of doing this which is uh, October 2022 that's as strong as we can make them um, so it's either this one or the very very few big bearing series casings that we've got left in stock we'll show you that in a minute as well so not quite lastly here is a metric 539 707 tail bearing um, and this is a one piece casing we have a very few left of these which is a 1950s big bearing case that bearing at the front there is huge compared with that one in there it is absolutely massive I'll see if I can find I'll see if I can find the video I did and add that in but then what happens is this bit gets bolted on the front which is where your seal sits inside and that is unboltable so if you wanted at any point to change your pinion seal climb under your vehicle take your dry flange off here with one nut undo the six bolts take that away to your bench not bearing out clean the back surface up here put a bit of rtv on bolt it back on job done really really nice quality diff this also has um, a filler plug in it um, it has the 716th bsf and it has a bigger head and tail bearing than any other diff that Land Rover made in the long nose of variety and flavour. So I'm going to weld one of these up now. The big difference on big bearing cases is the pinion. Now here's your pinion bearing. On the right hand side is a big bearing pinion. On the left hand side, the standard metric. As you can see there's a massive difference in in both size and strength and this is what makes these so much stronger pinion uh, bearing failure is one of the number one issues on not just land rover diffs but all diffs the bigger the bearing the better and there's there is a big difference and just like all the other ones these have different plates yet again because that little plate there is especially for the uh, big bearing case and i'll show you why on the right hand side of this casing on the left here you can see this is your oil way and on the big bearing case it's right bang in the center there so we have to have these special plates made for this and I've welded it up and I've also finished for the day so I have uh, also done the back filling uh, waiting for that to go off uh, ready for machining so big bearing case very rare very very strong but to be honest, if you went for one of our uh, metric uh, big bearing conversion cases with a Domex capping, not far off the strength of that. I'd still give that the edge uh, because when I'm TIG welding this, I have to wind the amps up to something mahosive. Um, I don't know what this casting is made out of, but my God, it takes some, uh, takes some amps to weld. Um, so that's that one. And just when you thought we finished, we're not we've got the short nose casing uh, short nose casing um, we also don't like because that also has the very silly and in this case bent copper pin in there um, so we don't like those but we do peg them so I'm going to weld one up and yes we've got special plates for this as well so here we have the short nose casing welded up and uh, these are an absolute pig we have to put spacer plates underneath generally uh, mess about to get it level and then we've got the top plate on and TIG weld it all up um, and as we showed you we don't like these because they've got that silly little uh, pin effort uh, so we've done that as well on this we have a different set of uh, Domex carrier cap conversions uh, these are the standard bolts we throw those away and we put 12.9 grade in and that converts that to the locking type and again you can have this on a non-pegged short nose case but on a pegged short nose case you will have this because we won't sell it with that silly little pin that we've chopped off there 
and that just about takes you through our range of peg casings. So, quick summary. Big bearing, split nose, pegged, has wings at the back and our locking tabs. Next, Imperial, has a filler plug, pegged, has wings in the back. Next, winged standard, metric, pegged, wings at the back. Late metric flat cap with a Domex flat cap conversion for strength or go for the Ultra build on top of that with the collets in pegged. And lastly, a little old rear 110 short nose. Again, flat capped, we've Domexed it so it takes wings. And that is our peg casing selection. If you need further info, just give us a ring and we'll chat you through the options. Bye for now.